how do you get there? And part of it has to be, and this is, this is a jab at the decentralizers because it's a question they don't take seriously enough. How do you deal with people with pre-existing pre conditions? If the decentralizers don't answer that question, and they haven't well, then they haven't, then they're not going to come up with a persuasive argument for the American people. Um, so I think that that is their challenge and something that has to be dealt with. Part of my answer is you make things so inexpensive, you allow innovation to the extent that things get cheap enough that it isn't such a problem to afford uh, to afford to serve everyone well. We have not been doing that for the last 50 years. So where are we now? I honestly think uh, the ACA, and we can talk about it if you like, I think it's going up in smoke despite the cheerful news uh, that they've attempted to put out in the last week. I think the website is the least of its problems. The rest of the workings has always been a problem. Um, but I'll say that the people who oppose it have not yet exhibited a vision that's particularly persuasive, that's something that, uh, that people can get thrilled about. And unless the decentralizers learn to acquire a passion and inspire a passion in healthcare, they're not going to win the arguments. Uh, so is this a good time to be starting a healthcare policy program? I like to think of a quote from Winston Churchill uh, that he said early in World War II, uh, after a pivotal moment, he said, this is not the end. It is not even the beginning of the end. It is perhaps the end of the beginning. That's where I think we are in healthcare, which is why I think it's the most exciting time imaginable to begin a program like this. Thanks much, and we can head into some Q&A.